Hey everyone, I'm Paul and today I'm replacing the radio in this 2010 Toyota Tacoma. I'm also changing one of the front door speakers and I'll take one of the rear door panels off so you can see all the speakers. This truck has the upgraded JBL audio system. What that means is there are six 2 ohm speakers, a subwoofer, and an amplifier located behind the back seat. In order to use the JBL speakers and amplifier and keep the steering wheel buttons working, I'm installing this interface module between the radio and the car's wiring. The first step to replacing your stereo is ejecting any CD that might be in there. You can't do it when the radio is out of the car. Oh, that looks nice. The new interface module won't have fader controls, so make sure to set the fader and balance to the center. Gently unsnap the climate controls from the dash, then unplug the two connectors behind it. There are four bolts holding the radio in place. Use a 10mm socket with a 6 inch extension to get them out. Pull the radio up and toward you to release the remaining snaps holding it in place. Unplug the clock connector under the radio. The blue connector is the satellite radio antenna and the black one is your regular AM FM antenna. The radio has three more connectors for speaker wires, power, and steering wheel controls. Now it's ready to come out. I recommend taking out the radio fuse under the hood. It's the 10 amp fuse here in the corner. There are a few dash kit options available, but I went with this one from Skosh because it matches the color and style of the dash better than the others. I chose the Kenwood DPX304 MBT. The MBT stands for Media Player with Bluetooth. It doesn't play CDs and the display is very basic. You can still connect your phone through an auxiliary headphone jack, USB cable, or Bluetooth. Install the black plastic trim thing, then the plastic mounting brackets snap into place. You sort of have to juggle the side pieces and the radio at the same time so the whole thing doesn't just fall apart. Slide the radio forward to the right depth and use the provided screws to hold it in place. I installed three screws on each side. That should be plenty. I went with the machine screws and I put them into the threaded holes in the radio. I'll need to reuse these yellow snap things from the old radio. Gently unsnap them from the old radio with a screwdriver and a pick from both sides and try not to send them flying across the garage. Organization is key here. If you have a mess, you won't find these little things when they take off. Taking out the clock is very hard. This unit is super snapped in here and I ended up breaking the plastic a little to get it out. It's okay, I broke the old dash plastic, not the clock. These were the tabs that held it, right here and here. This slot was very tight. It snapped into two more tabs on the side and I ended up breaking the ones on the bottom. Now just snap the clock into the new dash kit. This part is easy. Okay, this part is ready to go. The next step will be wiring. This truck has a few fancy things going on with the audio system, so an adapter is needed. There are a few choices for interface modules and they all have a million wires. This unit allows you to use the factory JBL amplifier and keeps the steering wheel buttons working, but has a smaller box and fewer wires than some of the other options. I said it was simple, right? Just kidding. This is an intimidating pile of wires. The module comes with several harnesses. We'll be using this one, and that one is not needed. This is for a rear view camera. Don't have that. And this is for a Sony or Pioneer radio steering wheel control. Don't need that. We're left with just these two. That's much better. This is the steering wheel control connector. I only need the blue and yellow wire, so let's cut off the other two. Before we start with the wiring, let's look at the switches. The left switches select the brand of the radio for the steering wheel controls. Set all the switches to on for Kenwood. The other set of switches are gain settings for the amplifier. I'll just leave them on the default setting. It looks like all of them up is the loudest. This four pin connector is for the steering wheel control. I just left the blue and yellow wire and cut off the other ones. These red and white RCA cables connect to the aux input jack in the center console. That jack is broken and the radio already has a headphone jack on the front panel, so I won't need these. The blue and yellow wires are for the steering wheel controls, so they go together. The black wire is ground, yellow is battery, and red is on with accessory. Just match up the colors here. 
From the car, we have two blue turn-on wires. I'll connect them both to power control on the radio. The orange wire is illumination. The radio doesn't have that, so I'll leave it disconnected. The other four wires are left front and right front speakers. I'll match up the colors on those. Notice the rear speakers are missing from the car adapter harness. You won't be able to adjust volume front to rear with this kit, but all the speakers will work. I twisted the wires together and soldered them. Soldering is easy and much better than crimp connectors. I slid some heat shrink over every wire before I soldered it, then I used a lighter to shrink it over the connection. The blue and yellow is the steering wheel control. The gray and white pairs of wires are for the front speakers. Yellow is battery, always on. Red is accessory, on with the key. Black is ground. The blue and white power control on the radio is connected to the amp turn on and the antenna turn on in the car. The rear speaker wires coming from the radio are not connected and the mute wire from the radio is also not connected. On this side, the illumination wire is not connected. These RCA jacks go to the auxiliary input that I won't be using. Let's go ahead and clean this up by cutting them off. The final touch is wrapping all these wires with electrical tape to keep them organized. Leave at least one inch without tape by the connectors to allow the wiring to bend. And that's it! This harness is ready to go in the car. The most annoying part for me is installing the Bluetooth microphone. It goes up by the rear view mirror, so I have to get some panels out of the way to run the wire for it. I hate these brackets too. They don't clip in right, so I'm drilling a hole and screwing it into the headliner. This mic is for phone calls, so I'm aiming it at the driver's seat. Tuck the wire up above the headliner. Don't run the wire in front of the side curtain airbag. Zip tie it to the wiring harness instead. Next, I'm dropping the wire straight down into the dashboard. The A-pillar trim slides into the dash at the bottom, then snaps into the metal at the top. Install two bolts, then the covers. I'm removing the driver's door sill trim by pulling it straight up with a plastic pry bar. The little footrest thing comes out by pulling on it, then you can reach the plastic nut that holds the kick panel. Pull the panel straight toward the back of the truck. Remove the two bolts holding the lower dashboard trim. Pull out the storage bin, then pull the whole panel straight back. I don't need to fully remove this piece, but unplugging all these connectors lets it hang down lower, out of the way. I routed the microphone wire up over the fuse panel, then taped it to the metal plate under the steering column. Finally, I pulled the wire up into the radio compartment in the dashboard. I'm done on the driver's side, so I can plug all the connectors back in and snap this panel into place. Remember to reinstall the two bolts and the storage bin. The kick panel goes straight forward to snap in. Push the plastic nut on, then the footrest. Now I can go back to working on the radio. Plug the two big radio connectors into the wiring harness adapter. The smaller connector does not get used. Remember to connect the clock under the radio. The Bluetooth microphone plugs into the pink connector. The black connector goes into the back of the radio, and don't forget to plug in the antenna. Stuff the wires up out of the way, and snap the radio into place. If you took the fuse out, now is a good time to put it back in. Before I reinstall the bolts, I want to test the radio and make sure everything works. Select the language, then turn demo mode off. Demo mode changes the colors often to make the radio look cool when it's on display at the store. I'm going to use my iPad to test the Bluetooth audio mode. Select the DPX304 MBT in the Bluetooth menu on your device, hit pair, then push the volume knob to confirm the connection. I found a channel on YouTube called No Copyright Sounds that has some good EDM style music that won't get my video blocked for copyright nonsense. Okay, Bluetooth audio works. Now let's check the steering wheel buttons. Volume up and down works and the up and down arrows are fast forward and rewind. I guess that word doesn't mean anything these days. It goes backwards in the track. The function of the steering wheel buttons can vary based on what app you're using on your phone. The select button changes the input source for the radio. The phone buttons on the right work too, but I don't have any friends, so we'll just go ahead and skip that phone call stuff in this video. You can also change the display color on this radio. 
You can choose from a few different colors, and if that's not good enough for you, there's an RGB mode where you can make any color you want. I'll set it to red to match the gauges. And finally, let's set the clock. What time is it? I don't even know. Everything works, so I'll go ahead and reinstall the four bolts that hold the radio. Plug the two connectors into the climate control and snap it back into the dash. I promised I would look at the speakers, so let's move over to the driver's door. These little white snaps need to come out of the metal and they go back into the plastic mirror trim. Be careful not to drop them into the door or lose them somewhere in the garage. Push in the push pin, then pop it out. Remove the screw by the door handle, then pry up near the front of the switches. Release the connector, then push the wires back into the door. There's a screw down here by the big door handle that needs to come out. Jam a plastic pry bar behind the door panel in the corner and twist it to start releasing the clips. Pull the door panel away from the door around the edges, then pull it straight up to release the clips by the window. The tweeter measures 2.5 inches in diameter, and the lower speaker is a 6x9. The left tweeter in this truck is blown and makes a crackling noise when you turn up the radio. All the other speakers work, so I ordered a replacement tweeter from Toyota to fix it. Let's compare these tweeters. The old one is on the right. From this angle they look about the same, but if you look at the back, the new one has a much bigger magnet, and it has a capacitor attached to the negative terminal. The sound has to go through the capacitor. This is called a base blocker, or a crossover. The old tweeter doesn't have a crossover, so if you listen to too much bass, it'll go straight into your tweeter and blow it up. You could install aftermarket speakers, but this bracket is weird and it would take a lot of extra work to change the mounting system. Also, these are 8 ohm speakers, and most speakers are 4 ohms. Different tweeters would not be compatible with the JBL amplifier. Slide the top of the door panel into the window opening first and push down to snap it in place. Then go around the edges pushing the clips into place. Start the push pin like this, put it in the hole, and push the center part flat. Install the mirror trim, then both screws near the door handles. Slide the back of the switch unit into the door panel first, then snap the front down. On the back door, pull the upper trim first. It's held in by three white plastic clips. Remove the clips from the door and reinstall them into the black plastic piece. The back door also has two screws, one by each door handle. Starting in the lower corner, pry the door panel away from the door to release the clips around the edges. Pull the door panel straight up to release it and don't forget about the power window switch. I reached behind the panel to push the switch up, then unplugged it. Toyota likes to play this game where they give you smaller speakers. Before taking the door panel off, you might think you have a 6 and a half inch speaker. Nope, it's a little tweeter in here. Okay, let's put this back together. Snap the door panel in at the top first. Line up the clips around the edges and push the panel towards the door. Reinstall the power window switch and two screws by the door handles. The black trim piece is held in place by three clips and don't forget about the little push pin down here. In case you're wondering, the subwoofer is back here, and the amplifier is behind this panel. That's it! Replacing the radio in a 2010 Tacoma is pretty easy. Thanks for watching, and remember to check out my other car repair videos.